Yo, what's up guys? Today we're going to be going over some of the main reasons why the average ranked player can't get masters. Maybe yourself as well. First off, in case you guys don't know me, I'm OG. I've been playing Brawl Stars since the very first day it came out and I've been playing professionally since the very first Brawl Stars tournament, I guess you could say. Uh, I've been a part of some amazing esports orgs. I'm currently in Foot Esports. Shout out to Foot, the goats. I've won a few tournaments, been to Worlds a few times, I've coached teams at Worlds a few times. I've gone to the top of Power League leaderboards and ladder and uh, I can easily get masters and like rank like every other pro player can in usually a few days. Um, so before we get into the video, I need you guys to understand that ranked right now, it's not a competitive game mode. Um, it might change in the future, there's no telling that, but now it will be the easiest time in the entirety of Brawl Stars, I'm pretty sure that ranked is this easy to get. So if it's something you want on your profile, then now would be the time to do it. So let's get into the tips. All right, so the very first tip I have is, it's gonna be hard to understand for some of you guys because obviously Brawl Stars, you wanna play the video game. The most important part of a ranked game has nothing to do with gameplay. I know it's like a really weird concept to understand, but in my opinion, 50% at least of competitive Brawl Stars is decided in draft. That's just how the game is. It's how the game has been for a few years now. And for ranked, I think it's even more than 50%. I think 50% is being modest too for competitive, but for ranked it's even more because there's modifiers that you have to take into account. So we're gonna focus on the phase before the draft. We're gonna call it the pre-draft. As soon as you guys get into the pre-draft, you need to focus on what the modifier is. If it's a certain one like quick fire, you should know that like brawlers with projectiles like Gene or Leon are good here. I can either pick or ban them. Um, and after that, you're gonna need to figure out what you actually want to ban. So once you start playing ranked consistently, you should have consistent bans that you just know on the top of your head once you play enough for like each map and each mode, each modifier. And uh, the picks and bans that I'd recommend, it can just be like super meta brawlers that you don't like playing in. So maybe you don't have them leveled up or something like that as well. Um, or it could just be brawlers that counter the brawlers that you plan on playing. Having these consistent bans will save you a lot of time, and it's nice to not really have to worry about it in the short amount of time you get in the pre-draft to think about it. Bans are more a personal thing though, and in ranked, I don't really think there's a set of right or wrong bans of each game of ranked, except for like a super, like, let's say like Bo on Snake Prairie, if they have first pick, ban Bo. <laughs> So hopefully we just got through the pre-draft all right. And so hopefully you and your team have gone through the pre-draft all right. And draft has started. Nobody on your team's insta-picked Mortis. And uh, you know, fingers crossed for that or Dynamite. But draft is by far the easiest way to exploit bad players in this game. It's also, in my opinion, the biggest difference between players who could get masters in power league and players who have masters in ranked. In my power league games, I don't wanna <laughs> Sound like a boomer, but like in Power League last year, like the average master player like knew how to draft like pretty decently. Um, in ranked, people really just be picking like anything, and it, it's it can make the game so easy or so hard depending on the brawlers that you play and pick and that your teammates pick and play. Um, so I could spend hours talking about like all the matchups in the game, which are important to know, like all the previous metas of brawlers being good in certain situations. Realistically, though. You don't need to know that to be better than 95% of Masters players in ranked right now. If that's something you guys would want in the future, maybe I can make a video on it. However, today, like, I don't want to spend, like, an hour talking about that. I want to get, like, these tips. And, uh, draft is just a portion of ranked, so I'm going to keep it super simple. There's always exceptions, but generally in Brawl Stars, you're going to have one brawler that plays mid, and then two brawlers that play lanes. The mid brawler is usually something with either a bit more longer range, does better in open space, and can help the lanes out. Lanes, there's a lot more variety overall, and it depends on maps, as you can have throwers, tanks, tank counters, assassins, like pretty much anything can go on a lane, uh, depending on the map, of course. And if you have first pick in the draft, I want you to think of three things. One, with the current bands, what's the best brawler on this map? If there's a modifier, you need to consider that as well. Let's use the example I used earlier. Uh, first picking Bo on Snake Prairie. He's not a very strong brawler right now. He hasn't been for a while, but because of his vision star power, he'll probably always be the best brawler on Snake Prairie. And he is definitely a pick or ban on that map if you have first pick. The second thing I want you to think of is how does this brawler affect the draft? An example would be, let's say, Dynamite. Maybe he's the best brawler in the game right now, like super strong in the meta. If you first pick it, 
it can make the draft really hard considering that they have last pick and there's picks like Mortis or Miko that like just their kit will always counter dynamic no matter how strong you um also you don't know what your randoms are gonna pick too so let's say you go dynamic they go barley or something like that it doesn't have to be exactly barley but you get the point those brawlers get countered by the same brawler and if the other team goes like Mortis or Miko like the game's just over like that so if you do have first pick I would definitely recommend Obviously you want a strong brawler, but it's also important to pick kind of a safer one, I'd say, unless the brawler is just like too good on that map to give up 2-3. The third tip for draft, is this brawler strong in the mode that I'm playing? So what I mean by that is if we're playing heist, can this brawler do a lot of damage to the safe? Like Chuck. Uh, by the way, random tip, if you play heist and ranked, pick your van chucked. From my experience, randoms have no idea how to play against it. Um, but sorry, back on topic. If we're playing Brawl Ball, is my Brawler good at scoring? Like Sandy with his gadget, it's like a free goal if you're close to the net. Gem grab, can my Brawler carry the gems or threaten their gem carrier? You guys can get the point, it's pretty simple stuff. And uh, just don't draft something that doesn't make sense. Like make sure there's some reasoning to actually pick the Brawler. Don't be that person that's just like, Insulux a terrible pick or like an ego pick and just like ruins the game for everyone. Like for some reason, my randoms want to play Colt on every map, and they're not very good at Colt on every map. So, yeah, don't be that guy. And one more thing. <laughs> do not spam ping your teammates to go to certain brawlers. You can suggest something, but I don't know if it's just me or not. That drives me crazy, and it makes me, like, just tilted before the game starts and not want to take it seriously. And uh, if someone just does a stupid pick as well, that also makes me want to take it, like, less seriously because in my head I'm like, do I really want to carry this person and just, like show them that it's okay to you know like do these picks every game and just ruin the game for everyone um that might just be more a personal thing but that's my advice to you guys uh during the draft also one last thing to keep in mind is the meta in brawl stars changes really often like we have balancing pretty much every month and uh it's definitely hard to keep up with so i would recommend watching like pro players tier list content creators that like have pro players helping them out with their tier list um just so you guys can keep up with the current meta and uh there's just a lot changing a lot being added like new hyperchargers and everything like that so if you have someone trustworthy that you know you can watch their video and get a better understanding and then you can test it out more yourselves i think it's a good thing to have like that kind of uh content available to watch and the final thing for draft please always remember to check that you have the right gears gadgets star powers um <laughs> it's easy to forget these things, especially if you're traded brawlers with not a lot of time left. Uh, it's happened to me in a few esports tournaments, honestly. So just make a mental reminder to always check your gears, your star powers, and your gadgets before you go into the game. It's very important, guys. All right, I know that was a lot, but we're finally in the game. Hopefully you guys have a decent comp, the right loadout. And all you have to do now is play. So you need to understand where to go on each map. It's pretty simple, it comes with experience. Um, ideally you want the best matchup possible. So always try playing for matchups, unless you know it's map dependent, but just a general rule, like try getting on your good matchups. And uh, you need to understand how the maps work. Like if you're picking a thrower, go on a side with the wall, like something as simple as that. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna give you a few tips just to keep in mind and about general gameplay. In my opinion, in Brawl Stars, the most important thing is positioning. It can make the game like really easy to play or really difficult to play. So understanding where you need to be on the map is very important and it's different for each brawler and map. If you're on a tank, it might be worth getting hit a few times, giving us some HP to get to a certain point. If you're playing, let's say, mid and gym grab, you could even like sacrifice a few uh, gems in the middle to help your lane win and get into the choke point or something like that and just make the rest of the game really hard for your opponents. So it's all circumstantial and there's no way I could explain it all in this video, but it's important to keep in mind, uh, never let anyone on the other team have anything for free. So if they're making a play, you either like try stopping them or you make your own play somewhere else. The next tip I have is ammo literally ammo understand your reload speed your opponent's reload speed knowing when they're out of ammo and when to push making sure you don't run out of ammo when they're trying to push or like damage them a lot so they can't push you then reload uh for me like all the pros that i've talked to about it it's just something that happens subconsciously because i think we've all played the game so much and it definitely comes with experience and just playing the game 
If you want to like fast track it a bit, I'd recommend playing a variety of brawlers so you can get a feel for how their ammo regen is. And again, meta changes happen, so it's important to test them out after balancing and everything like that. But it's something all good players have to do. The next gameplay tip I have is utility, and it's something that is really important as well. So pretty much what I mean by utility is that you have a limited amount of resources, whether it's gadgets, supers, hyperchargers, and you really need to think about if using all your gadgets in the first 30 seconds is the right play, or if popping your hypercharge as soon as you get it is the best choice, or if you'd rather hold on to it and look for a big game winning play. This is all circumstantial though. Some games it might be best to use all your gadgets in the first like 30 seconds, get positioning, hold it the rest of the game, make it hard for them. Again, this is all circumstantial. Some games it might be best using all your gadgets right away to get an early lead. Other games you might just want to hold your gadgets or like a tower pole or something like that till you see a really good opportunity. It's different for every brawler, but you really need to understand the worth of every part of your brawler's kit and how using it will affect the game. The final general gameplay tip I'm going to give you, um, and this is more specified for ranked, it's when you have to play as a team or when you have to play by yourself. Sometimes you'll get terrible teammates. That's just part of the game, uh, especially if you're like solo queuing, then this it's bound to happen, doesn't matter what elo you're in. So if I can tell my teammates are useless, I'm gonna try playing riskier and going for more plays because I know my team isn't gonna win me the game. At the same time though, if I can tell my team is playing properly and knows what to do and I'm still playing super risky, I'm probably causing like more harm than good. Uh, so it's just kind of paying attention to what's happening all over the map and just not being locked in on yourself and understanding how your teammates are playing. Above Diamond, Ranked is the best of three, obviously, and that gives you a chance to change things up in between games. There's a lot of different things that you can think of. Typically, if a team wins, most likely they're going to try keeping things the same. You can try to swap lanes if you lost, or even if you win, you can try to predict your enemies switching lanes and then preemptively swapping as well to match that. But generally speaking, unless you think you lost just because of misplays, it's a good idea to try something different in game two. It's also really important your teammates understand what you're trying to do. So whether it's like shooting a lane, I don't know, putting a spray or pin and just like communicating however you can with them, um, just try making them understand what you're trying to do and get on the same page as them. Mental is a really big part of best of threes as well. And like, I can't count the amount of times I've had a terrible first game or like my team has, and then someone just goes and runs it down or stands in a corner, walks around like shooting someone, following them, uh, just like, giving up pretty much and if you really want to win and improve you know don't do that if someone on your team is doing it just ignore it and you probably won't win the game but you can maybe still get something out of the game just focus on yourself and uh make sure even if it doesn't do anything to report them at the end of the game at least for me that kind of when i get that player action report in my dm it kind of calms me down like a little bit after um it's just nice to see that the game understands that they're the issue you know all right, now that we've successfully made it through, all right, now that we've made it successfully through a ranked game, and this one I do recommend doing. Uh, you don't have to do it for every game, but I do think it's okay to, if you don't understand what happened to the game, or you wanna see how like specific matchups went, or like what went wrong at a certain time, I'd really recommend that you rewatch your games and just analyze things and get a better understanding of it. So identifying why you lost or won a game is really important, whether it's like one play or just like you're gradually winning your lane, um, your gem carrier is getting more gems than the other one, like slowly and the lanes are even. And you can also look at how like the match was went across the board and see if they were played correctly or if people were throwing, people like losing position, wasting a bunch of ammo, bad hypercharges, supers, etc. <laughs> There's a lot that you can analyze. And uh, it's really important to look how you individually played as well. That's something that everyone can always improve on. Like it's impossible to play the perfect game of Brawl Stars, I think. So we could always hit like one more shot or like just use our ammo a little better or regen at a specific time. So there's always room for improvement for everyone. I really think one of the best ways to improve is also by learning from people who are better at the game than you. So whenever I'm trying to improve at any video game, I always look for a streamer that's really good at it or a YouTube video doing something specifically that I want to do or I'm having trouble doing. And uh, with Brawl Stars, we're lucky enough to have a pretty decent esports scene. So if you really want to improve and understand the game more, 
I recommend watching the Brawl Esports FUDs of all the major tournaments and uh, just try understanding what's going on. Some pro players even do like analysis of their games. Those are really good because you can hear like their opinion. And there's pretty much just like a lot of resources to generally improve on the game from people that are better at the game. All right, and my final tip, this one is if you don't care about improving on the game. And to be fair, that's fine. Like it's a video game, right? So maybe you just want that master's icon to show off to your friends um, and you don't really think you'll play Brawl Stars for a long time, but you just want to get it right now. Um, it's really easy to get masters if you play in a team with people that have higher elo or masters than you there's no reason why three competent players should ever really lose a game unless they mess up the draft or something like that beneath like masters 99 percent of the time in my opinion uh like i said it's not a competitive game mode right now so it is easier now than ever and there's a lot of ways to exploit getting masters like just playing with people that are higher elo than you which i don't really agree with but it's something that's in the game and uh i think personally that rank should be like solo like duo queue at max teams of three is just like really unfair in my opinion it's like impossible to lose if you have like three competent players like i said against like one competent player and two randoms so i think they will be changing. I'm just guessing that they'll be changing something in the future because I think the system's really broken right now. But a lot of people do do it and technically there's not anything wrong with it. So if you have friends that are better at the game and they're willing to help you out get masters, go for it if you really just want the masters icon. All right guys, that is gonna be it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed something different and uh, please remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you all soon. Peace.